Hello again everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into episode 5, the PMDG 777-300ER series for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This one's going to cover three short topics to help you get a little bit more confident with the jet and understand some more of its features. So hit like, hit subscribe, share your thoughts, any tips, the usual stuff down in the comments below. Welcome back to Manchester. We're on the ground at the moment and the first topic, uh, it'll all be time stamped, is auto start. So the 777 has a auto start function and that allows you to basically start the engines almost similar to that of the 787 and I don't mean starting both at the same time. On this you'd start one or the other, you can start with the left first or the right first as we mentioned in our episode 1 tutorial. but if auto start there is on and it usually is by default uh, with this aircraft anyway you can for example start engine left and then instantly pop that fuel control lever to run and the auto start system will throw the fuel in when the N2 reaches the relevant figure. Nice and simple, that's auto start. Alrighty, so the next topic is going to be VNAV descent profiles and speed restrictions. So, prime perfect example today, Westcott on the descent into London Heathrow using the Honley One Hotel arrival. It's pretty much the same route, or is the same route that we've used uh, in episode 1, however um, we've used a different departure runway and a different SID out of Manchester, but if we look at the Honley One Hotel arrival, this is the Navigraph charts on the screen at the moment folks, you will see that we've got Honley followed by Soppit at flight level 150, there she is, and uh, after that Westcott's with a maximum speed of 220, but no altitude constraints. So if you compare that to Bovingdon which is just there, that big square that I've just drawn uh, and you look at the FMS you can actually see um, Soppit at flight level 150 no speed constraint followed by Westcott estimated flight level 124 no speed constraint though and Bovingdon flight level 70 at 220. Well now that is because you can't have speed only constraints in the 777 so to get around that and to verify our nav data what we must do is manually change the Westcott area so we want a speed constraint of 220 knots so we'll select 220 slash and then we'll put in a soft constraint 9000A should do the job and that's now asking us to achieve Westcott at 220 knots at or above flight level 9 or 0 and that will uh, be reflected in the way that the VNAV is going to fly our descent and that's inputting a speed constraint in without an altitude restriction so that's the second little topic of today's shorter video the next topic then flying holds in the PMDG triple seven three hundred ER. Now if we're flying holds at 180 knots we're going to need flaps aren't we and uh, depending on our weight some of the holds like the one that we're going to be doing in Bovingdon to demonstrate this will require potentially flaps um, depending on what our minimum clean speed is so the maximum speed at Bovingdon is 220 knots and we want to be at flight level 70 Naturally, if we're flying into London Heathrow on, for example, VATSIM and it's quite busy, we might be asked to enter Bovingdon at flight level 90 and we might then be stepped down the stack to 70 to a then exit. But how do we go about actually putting that into the aircraft? Well, again, we can turn our attention back to the charts. There's Bovingdon at uh, 220 flight level 70. We want to press the hold button. And then we want to select Bovingdon. 
it gets put into the scratch pad underneath the boxes and we want to then insert it into the box and we then begin to generate a hold. You can see that uh, our route takes us in with an inbound course of 116 degrees which is a radial of 296 from the Bobbingdon VOR and the outbound leg is a right turn outbound 296. Typically it'd be about a minute again it depends on time you can see that we've got one minute legs already in and the inbound course with the right turn is already correct as well so speed target 220 flight level 70 best speed 220 is automatically put in there because of the nav data and the inbound course direction 116 right turn one minute legs all correct so we're going to leave it at that if you want to make any changes then this is the time to do it. So if, for example, the charts say inbound 116 degrees, but we're actually flying into that waypoint or fix for the hold at 200 degrees, then uh, we can amend it uh, and make sure that that inbound course for us is set correctly, 116, um, just in case. So you want to match the charts precisely here. When you're happy, it's all accurate. Execute the change. You will then see on your flight plan route the relevant hold inserted into your flight path. There it is at Bovingdon, that little magenta circle or oval for us. So to demonstrate those two topics that we've just discussed, the speed only constraints or restriction and flying the hold in the 777-300ER, uh, we're going to just demonstrate that now. So we are Past top of descent in towards Sopit, Westcott's just ahead, about 18 nautical miles, and on the legs page, we're targeting currently uh, Sopit flight level 150, but the aircraft is already now aware, because of what we did earlier, of a speed constraint at Westcott that it wasn't otherwise able to achieve, because we've now amended the data to ensure that we can achieve that speed restriction. So, as we get a little bit closer, we might get asked for more drag to help the aeroplane out uh, and it's all about energy management now so it almost kind of brings us into another topic in itself the aeroplane in descent can be quite slippery and uh, if you're going certainly for a continuous descent you might find like we do at the moment the speeds just sitting above that magenta speed bug so when we get to stop it flight level 150 the aeroplane's going to go ah i need to go to 220 knots now which is quite a deceleration from 300 knots we're most likely going to need to help manage the energy, uh, induce a bit of drag, pop those speed brakes out to help decelerate the aeroplane. Thankfully the speed brakes are really good in this and you can see on the legs page there the hold is already ready to go as well. So there's the speed constraint or the restriction that we've manually entered with that soft altitude waypoint and the aeroplane now begins to decelerate to achieve that. Now it's not targeting any other altitudes, it's not going straight into a hard descent because we've put flight level 90 at or above for the waypoint. So it's saying well actually that's okay, I can probably target that, but we can't quite make the other constraints so it's asking for drag required, just popped up there. So let's help it out, let's put a little bit of speed brake out. Okay, so. We've done Westcott speed 220 and we're now inbound Bovingdon, uh, 2,000 feet to above flight level 70, which is also the transition level for today as we fly into Heathrow. And uh, this is going to be a little demonstration of entering the hold. Now, if you look closely, you can see the aeroplanes dynamically changing the width of that turn based on our speed uh, and all the rest of it. And you can kind of see it moving ever so slightly uh, and it might be more apparent in a little while uh, as we enter but in effect I'm going to show you the entry into the hold the way the aeroplane is doing it and similarly um, one of the options that then becomes available in the FMS to exit the hold. And this will be the final piece for today's episode.
There's our cabin secure, so we've uh, got notification from the back to tell us that the aircraft's ready. And then, just as a reminder, look, 14, 1500 foot per minute. It's telling us we need drag because the airplane is quite slippery, as we mentioned earlier. So a little bit of speed brake just to target 220 again. We're going to get that audible warning, no doubt. There we go. Speed brake extended so we can clear that. Cancel the warning. And the aircraft's levelling up. So let's uh, clear that speed brake in prior to the aircraft levelling off because it's going to then use power. And here's the entry into the hold. So beginning with the right turn. If we bring that range ring into 10 you can see that radius of the turn there at 220 knots. The aircraft's currently maintaining 5 degrees nose up. We're not going to necessarily use flap 1, but if you want to lower the nose, then you can. It's a good time to kind of extend that. We are at minimum clean. So anything lower than that, we might want to consider extending the flaps. So there, for example, the aircraft's struggling ever so slightly. So let's just put in flap 1 and help it out. It's all about working with the aircraft and we're going to turn our heading bug to the outbound course for the hold which is 296 degrees according to the charts so that's set ready and flaps one now just gives us that bit of buffer between our up speed and flap one at 200 or 199 knots And now, if you have a look at the hold page, it's currently active, it's all in magenta, and uh, you can either put in another hold somewhere else if you want to, so if you're perhaps being held at Westcott first and then you get moved to the hold at Bovingdon on the way into Heathrow, then you can set up two or three, however many holds you need, uh, just to exit, you just press that hold, exit hold button there. or you can immediately be vectored by ATC. So for example, if we turn now exit the hold now heading 270, we'll spin that wheel heading select mode 270 degrees, bam, out we go. So there you go, hopefully those uh, couple of topics there helping improve your knowledge and understanding of some of the features and functions and systems within the PMPG 777-300ER for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hit like, hit subscribe, share your thoughts, tips, tricks, and if you've missed any uh, episodes so far then go back and check those out there's a dedicated playlist to that and a freeware summarized checklist for those of you who might want to download that as well but in the meantime as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you very soon take care